Welcome to Design Fusion's Solid Edge blog. This is part two of our three part blog series on the variable table. Part two introduces you to the creation of formulas and rules. In the variable table, users can create formulas to control variables using the formula column. The expressions can consist of variables only or of mathematical expressions that contain any combination of constants, user-defined variables, or dimension variables that the software placed. Users can create expressions by typing them directly into the formula box for a variable, using the function wizard, or using the formula option on the variable rule editor dialog box. The system provides a set of standard mathematical functions or users can also select functions that they wrote and saved. The functions can be typed in with the proper syntax, or you can use the function wizard to select and define the function. The function wizard is convenient when you forget the proper syntax for a math function. You start the function wizard by clicking the FX button on the variable table. Remember from part one, that the trig functions available in the variable table always assume that the input value for the function is in radians and returns the results in radians, not in degrees. To insert a function into a formula, do the following. In the variable table, click the function cell in which you want to enter the formula. Then click the function wizard button. In the function wizard dialog, Click the function category and the function name. Click the next button. The function wizard dialog box displays the arguments for the function. Type the values for the arguments and then click the finish button to enter the completed function into your formula. Let's have a look at this in Solid Edge. In this example, we have a job to make a series of punch holders. The punch tips vary in size but are all conical in shape, only the cone angle and length change. In this sketch, I'll demonstrate what happens when the length of the cone tip changes and the angle of the cone tip changes. Notice that these changes always affect the cone base diameter. We can calculate this result and capture it in a variable table in a model. Back in my model, I launched the variable table. Notice that I have already named the two variables that will change depending on the size of the tip. There's the shaft underscore diam and the shaft underscore length. I use underscores here because spaces are not allowed in variable names. Next, I will create two user-defined variables representing the tip angle and tip length that I will get from my supplier. For the tip angle, I will change the units to angle units. Then I'll enter in the name tip underscore angle. And I'll give it a starting value of 15 degrees. Next, I'll create another variable called tip underscore length. I'll change the units back to distance and then enter in a starting value of 12.7. If you recall from the slides, any trig operation in the variable table uses radians. So I first need to convert the tip angle value to radians. To do this, I first create a variable named pi. I'll make this equal to the value of pi. Instead of typing in the value, I'll launch the function wizard. Under the function category of all, we find an existing function for pi. I'll select that and notice that this is pi to 15 decimal places. I click finish and the function is placed. Notice that the syntax includes empty parentheses. I always forget this syntax. This is why I create my own variable name of lowercase pi. I just find it easier to work with. Next, I'll create a variable to represent the tip angle in radians. I'll name this variable tip underscore rads. I'll make this equal to the tip angle variable divided by 180 over pi. 
I'll place the 180 over pi in brackets to ensure the correct order of operations for this formula. Notice that the tip rads variable is equal to 0.26 radians. I now have enough variables to create a formula to automatically calculate the diameter of my shaft. In the shaft underscore diam formula field, I will enter in the equal sign and then launch the function wizard. In the math and trig category, I will locate and select the tan function and click next. For the argument, I will type in the tip underscore rads variable name and then hit finish. I want to multiply this result by the tip length. So I type in an asterisk for the multiplication sign and then instead of typing in the variable name, I can click in the tip length variable name cell and notice that the name is copied to the formula. I'll place this formula in brackets and then add an asterisk and the number two at the end to multiply this result by two. When I hit the enter key, the variable is updated. Next, I want to ensure that the overall length of the punch tip and shaft never exceeds 101.6 millimeters or four inches. To do this, I make the shaft length equal to 101.6, subtract the tip length. I have now captured the intelligence of my previous sketch into the variable table of my model. To test this, I go back to the sketch. I'll just close the variable table so you can see the sketch. Notice that when the angle is 20 and the length is 16, the diameter is 11.65. Let's test this in the model. I open the variable table and enter in the new values. Notice the result is 11.65 as expected. I can now save this as a template and use this for rapid creation of custom punch shafts. When you select a variable in the variable table, you can click the variable rule editor button to define a set of rules for a variable using the variable rule editor dialog box. Defining rules for a variable restricts design changes to a more controllable set of values. You can define a discrete set of values or a range of values for a variable using the variable rule editor dialog box. The slide shows an example of a discrete list of values of 10, 20, 30, and 40 millimeters. The variable rule editor is used to define the rules for a variable. Users can define a discrete set of values or a range of values for a variable with the variable rule editor dialog box. The slide shows an image of the variable rule editor dialog. As an example, let's see how to define a min-max limit for a variable. In the dialog, select the min max limit option. When you set this option, you can specify that the variable minimum and maximum values are between two values, greater than or greater than and equal to a value, less than or less than and equal to a value, or outside a range. This slide lists three examples. It's important to note that the minimum and maximum values can also be defined by other variables. The value for those variables shows in the dialog box and are read only. Let's have a look at the variable rule editor in Solid Edge. Back in my punch shaft model, I want to add some rules. First, I know that there are only four standard angles used. So I'll open the variable table and right click in the tip angle rule cell. From the shortcut menu, I will select the variable rule editor command at the bottom of the menu. In the dialog, I toggle the limit value to option and then toggle on discrete list. 
in the discrete list field, I'll type in 15, 20, 25, 30, all separated with a semicolon. I will then click OK to accept this list and close the dialog. Now when I attempt to change the value of the tip angle variable, I can only select from the list containing the values that I entered in the discrete list field. Let's add another rule, this time to the tip length variable. Once again, I right click in the tip length rule cell and launch the variable rule editor from the shortcut menu. In the dialog, I toggle on the limit value to option and this time I select the min max limit option. For the minimum limit, I select the greater than or equal to option. I could then enter in a variable name or a value. Here I'll enter in the value of 12.7. For the maximum limit, I'll select the less than or equal to option. And I'll enter in the value of 50.8. I'll click OK to accept this min max limit and close the dialog. Notice that both the discrete list and min max limits are shown in the range column beside the variables that the rule was assigned to. If I attempt to enter in a tip length outside that range, I will get a message telling me that I have violated this rule. When I dismiss this message, you will see that the cell turns orange. To clear this, I must enter in a new value that is acceptable to the defined rule. With these rules, I've enhanced the power of my template by ensuring that I never create a shaft that doesn't follow the design rules that I built into my variable table. Want to learn more? Sign up to our customer portal at the website listed here where you have access to knowledge base articles, tips and tricks, how-to articles, and much more. If you need additional support, contact our support team at support at designfusion.com or call us at 1-877-215-1883.